So hello and uh, welcome to my presentation about personal data. Um, I'll start with showing uh, what is really meant by personal data and then go further, uh, explain to you how your data can be stolen and also why it's harming us when it's stolen by presenting some different risks, um, including the one of Facebook and Cambridge Analytica. And at the end, I'll come up with the actual laws and rights around personal data. So, um, there exists lots of different definitions about um, personal data, but most, most likely it can be said that it includes um, and any information that is linked to an individual's personality, such as name, um, date and place of birth, the social security number or biometrical records, and also any other um, information that is linked to an individual, like um, the medical, educational, financial or employment information. So I think every of you had once uncovered their personal data on the internet. When I think about it, every, every single thing of me could be online. Here you can see um, the information, I'm a bit protectful about my personal data, but um, it's there, it's online. Even um, not everybody can see it, just my friends. But we should know what could happen to this data. And um, it's important to know some of the um, different hacking methods that are commonly used today. So the most important one is uh, the Trojan or virus. I haven't listed it up here because it's so well known. And uh, there exists a lot of different uh, sorts of, of Trojan. Um, here I want to present some of the not so well-known um, methods. To start with Keylogger. Um, this one is based on an audio driver that can record all of your keyboard activities and store the information locally and unencrypted in the file on the computer's hard drive. So once you log in, um, a password, or for example, on your bank account, the hacker has access to it. Another one is a very important one is the denial of service, short DDoS. And this one is a hacki hacking technique to take down a site or server by flooding it with a lot of traffic so the server is unable to um, process all the requests and crash down. And it can cost the company millions if their homepage isn't available for its customers anymore. And so they often have to pay money to stop the flooding. And this um, hacking metho method is increasing massively. So uh, it's a real problem of our time. Another is a fake VIP. And this of often happens in public places where the hacker sets up a Wi-Fi hotspot, um, and this one isn't encrypted. And it's really a trap because um, it often has a very irritating name, like uh, if you're on an airport, it's called Airport 1.0, and you think it's the official uh, Wi-Fi of the airport, but in reality, there's a hacker behind it. And um, once you... Um, Yeah, you connect with this Wi-Fi um, and you um, working with, with data. The hacker has access to all this data. And phishing is a similar one, but um, here the criminals co copy an official website, for example, for a bank account, and send the link to people. And because um, the websites are looking very familiar and professional, there are a lot of people taken in by this trick. And I think you have all 
heard about cookies. A cookie is a text file given to your computer um, by websites you visit. And the cookie keeps your personal data, such as browsing history, or usernames or passwords. And it also has an expire date. So if you haven't logged in with your data for several weeks, the data will be deleted. But uh, once a uh, um, criminal, cyber criminal has um, access to this cookie, he can even authorize himself as you on a, com on a browser. So, um, yes, I have a lot of friends, or even me, before I uh, have done the research for this presentation, I thought, yes, it's th it doesn't harm me when other people get access to my data. Yeah, we have even discussed it before. We would even sell the data, but what are the, the risks behind it? So I was very shocked to hear in a um, medical home for elderly of my very hometown, there happened recently a cybercrime. And uh, foreign uh, hackers had placed a Trojan in the computer system, which encrypted all the medical data for the, of the residents. The nursing home had to pay a ransom, otherwise the doctors couldn't ensure a correct treatment of their patients. Um, so I think medical centers are highly vulnerable with their digital data. Hackers are able to tie up the medical equipment or block the med medical data of the patients. Um, a way to prevent such an attack is to regularly save uh, the medical data of the patients. And uh, the, the nursing home here had done that. They have um, had a, a second copy of the data, but even then they, they paid the ransom because they were scared about, uh, about the treatment, about the, this data. And here the, the police, they say you shouldn't pay any ransom because so you encourage the, the um, cyber criminals and they earn money uh, to gain up the infrastructure and get more powerful. Yes, the police um, asserts that the attacks becoming more, more professional and also more difficult to discover. So our personal data gets more and more important. It's not only important to protect data like passwords or credit card details, but also our personal identification. The identity on the internet should be in our full possession like the one in reality, but uh, this isn't the case. We give our personal data for free to an organization and we, f we f fully trust this organization and let them deal with our precious data. So. While installing an application on the phone, for example, we give the company behind it access to all our data on the phone. On Google Play Store, while installing an application, um, you automatically give your permission to a list of personal data uh, that can be used by the company. This list is, of, is often hidden on the bottom of the page or referred in the long um, terms and conditions. But we all know we, we are <laughs> not reading these conditions. So we just trust these websites and applications and don't check if there's a trustable company behind it. So to cite as an example, Facebook is certainly the most familiar one. I think you all are all familiar with um, the scandal around Mark Zuckerberg, but um, I'll give you a short resume about it. So the developer of an application, application which was running a poll on Facebook um, collected the data of the users and their friends. And this was especially a scandal because also the data of people who hadn't attended the poll was collected. It just had to be friends with one who had. So, and all this data was then transferred to Cambridge Analytica, which re received information about more than 15 million um, users of Facebook. 
And Zuckerberg has known about this illegal transfer since 2015, um, but he hadn't informed the users. Cambridge Analytica had as assured the destruction of the data and Zuckerberg just naively believed it. He had then um, he had to explain himself in a, f um, in a hearing. Um, maybe I could show you at the end, if you have time left, um, a short video. Maybe you have already seen it, <laughs> but yeah, you can have a look. So um, Zuckerberg isn't just dealing with the fallout about improper handling um, of this people's information. It's whether Facebook, with its uh, two billion people using it ch um, each month, is still trustworthy. And in the hearing, he stated out, we know now we didn't do enough to focus on preventing abuse and thinking through how people use these tools to do harm. And also, can we get our systems under control? And second, can we make sure that our systems aren't used to undermine democracy? And here he addressed to another delicate issue because Cambridge Analytica used the collected data um, in the presidential election with careful placed advertising on Facebook. So with this background, it's clear that something has to be done to prevent another data transfer like that. And I think um, the scandal plays a key role in the handling of personal data of our future. Because Facebook is a, a free platform, we pay with our data, not with money. And therefore, the platform should be more transparent. The users have to know who has access to their data and what they are doing with it. And also, it should be in the user's hand to which price they would um, companies let work with their data. And businesses and governments had to change their attitude about cybersecurity. There is a huge lack of understanding and companies um, have to go with the technical development. So, once your personal data is released to the internet, you are out of control what could happen with this data. But what are um, actual rights and laws that are existing around personal data? The old law was released in 1995 um, and lasted over 20 years. In this period of time, the impact of the internet in our lives increased massively. Uh, since 1995, the countries of the EU implemented the laws in different ways. Lots of different articles had been added in every country, but um, with a communicational source that is used to connect people over the whole world, it's uh, very difficult to have different laws in every country. So the EU decided in um, 2012 to reform the old law um, with a goal to achieve um, a better protection of the data, the user's data. The new regulation was discussed over three years and then came into force on May 2016. And it will be applied from the 25th of May this year, so in more or less two weeks. Um, but already in its early states, um, it draws criticism by the digital economy because they fear negative impacts um, on the economic growth. And that's because regulation and technology, I think they can't exist on the same time or it's, it's hard. So what does the new law say and what impact on the internet users does it have? Uh, before I go further, I have to say that uh, yeah, there, um, it's a very long written article. It has around 170 points and I haven't read every one, but I <laughs> just want to summarize it a bit. So they wanted to make it easier to understand for what we are giving our consent. 
and um, companies will no longer be able to use long um, illegible terms and conditions full of legalize. In a request of consent, it must be used clear language, um, just easily to understand, and I think this one is a very good approval. Uh, the biggest change lies in the extended responsibility of the GDPR. The new laws applied, applies to all um, companies that are processing the personal data of EU citizens. And it doesn't matter whether the company's processing the, uh, takes place in the EU or not. It also includes activity like offering good, goods and, or services to the EU citizens. Um, and also fines will be applied, for example, for not having sufficient customer consent um, or not informing um, customer about a breach, like the one of Facebook. He had known about it since 2015 and hadn't informed the users. So with the new law, um, he, had, he should um, pay a fine. So... Um, a breach notification must be done within 72 hours of first having become aware of the, of the breach. And the rights of data is very expounded by the new law. If a customer is concerned about its personal data, he can ask where and for what purpose the data is being processed. Further, the control has to provide a copy of the personal data in electronic format that is free of charge. And um, also a new article is about the right to be forgotten, also known as data erasure. And here a customer has the right to let the controller erase his personal data that are no longer relevant to original purpose. Um, or also data that is withdrawing his, his consent. But here it's important that the controller compares the customer's rights with the public interest in the availability of the data. So I think uh, criminal records can't just be erased from the internet because um, yes, other people should know about the a criminalist or yes uh, something interesting for the public should be erased and also the customer or user is allowed to transmit his data to another controller so he can just take his data with him in addition um, data protectors um, protector officers will be employed which will monitoring the controller's data processing. And these laws are just in the EU. I think uh, in the USA, they have a very open um, data regulation. And I think this one, this regulation are a very big step in our um, history. I think uh, it's a very good thing to have it. I hope I could now give you a short summary about the risks and also improvement about data, um, personal data. Thank you for listening. Here are my resources.